Today, I'm taking you to Blanco Cafe in San Antonio, Texas. So, my uncle loves to order this plate. It's two chicken enchiladas, carne guisada, rice and beans. So, we visited him recently, and he ordered this for my husband, and he fell in love with this. So, I'm recreating it today. This is going to be good. Okay, so here is my carne guisada, and let me show you how I make it. It's not hard this is about two pounds of beef chuck roast that i cut into small chunks and basically stewed in this flavorful gravy okay so right into the pan goes my meat and this recipe is good for a pound and a half to two pounds of meat and if you do end up using two pounds of beef maybe add an extra half cup of beef broth or water to this and adjust the salt level in the recipe because ultimately it's going to be to your preference. Okay, so now I'm going to add around a half teaspoon of salt and a half teaspoon of pepper. Again, adjust that to your preference. And I am just going to mix and continue browning this on all sides. And I will show you, It'll go through stages. Right now the pan's hot, so it's getting a good sear, but ultimately the natural juices from the meat will release and it'll start getting really watery or liquid in the pan, so it'll stop searing. You wanna keep cooking it and searing it until that juice sort of evaporates and you've rendered a lot of the fat and it starts to get a brown, golden brown crust on the exterior. And this will take some time. So at this point, my meat does have some good searing, it's browned, so I am going to remove it from the pan and continue cooking the rest of the ingredients. Okay, now I'm going to start to saute my fresh ingredients. Here I have my onion, and I'm also going to be adding the fresh garlic, and I am going to give those a head start and saute those for a minute or so. Okay, now I'm going to add my fresh diced tomato. And I do want to mention that you could also add bell pepper to this. You could opt to use some tomato sauce in place of the fresh tomato. You could also add potatoes to this. I've had carne guisada several ways. I literally probably have five different ways I could make this going off of recipes that my tias and tios make and even my mom and my grandmother. But this is the simple way I like to do it. So I basically cooked out the onion, garlic, and tomato for around five minutes. I'm going to add another tablespoon of oil right to the center of the pan. And now I'm going to break down that beef bouillon cube. Okay, so I've basically broken down the beef bouillon cube and mixed it and combined it well. So I'm going to add my meat right back into the pan. I'm going to give everything a mix and continue breaking down the onion and tomato as I start to combine everything. Okay, so now that everything is combined, I'm going to add my all-purpose flour. The flour is going to help thicken any sauce in the pan and the water that I'm using to create a delicious gravy for this. Now I'm just going to combine the flour and continue cooking it out for around a minute or so. And once it starts to form a crust at the bottom of the pan, that is a good indication to start adding your water. I'm going to start by adding half of my water and just working it in and combining it with the meat and the flour that I cooked out. This will help prevent lumps. So you want to slowly just combine it well. And I am going to scrape the sides of this pan because that is delicious fond. That will add tons of flavor and even color to this dish. Okay, so now that everything is combined, I just want to make sure all the meat is submerged as best as I can get it here in the pan, I'm going to push that down. And you want to bring this up to a simmer, just like this. Once it comes up to a simmer, I'm going to cover it with this lid. By the way, this lid actually goes to something else, but it does fit pretty close on this pan. And now I'm going to lower the heat. Now the heat adjustment will vary from stove to stove. Right now I put it on a three, but ultimately I will be lowering it to a one because if you see that it's starting to rapidly boil with the lid on, you want to lower it because it will 
burn at the bottom of the pan. So here I've already lowered it around 10 minutes into the cook time. I didn't lift the lid. I can just tell it's going a little too rapid. I want it at a gentle simmer and I'm simmering this for one hour or until you reach the desired tenderness of the carne guisada. One hour usually does the trick for me, but again, there are many variables. Depending how high you have your heat, you may have to add another half cup of water. Now here, it has been simmering for one hour, and I'm gonna skim off some of the rendered fat from the top, and it's pretty much done. The thickness of the gravy is exactly where I like it, but if you do find that the gravy is too thin, uncover it and let it keep simmering until you reach the desired thickness of gravy or the texture. And if you feel like it's too thick and it's starting to burn throughout the cooking process, add a little more liquid. Okay, so the carne guisada is done, but let me show you. I made some of my Mexican rice and I used the V8 method which I recently have done. I will show you how I did that, but this is just, oh, can't wait to dig into this. I'm going to toast the rice over a medium-low heat until it's golden brown and aromatic. Well, maybe a light golden color, not golden brown. So I'm going in with my onion. Everything's just going to become very fragrant with this. Oh, it smells good. Now for the garlic and for the ground cumin and oops I'm like wrong peppercorn uh, mix that'll warm the spices the dry spices through I'm gonna go in quickly with a tablespoon of the chicken bouillon powder mix it Now for the V8. Now for the water. to over mix this just gently kind of incorporate everything together okay so I've covered it with a lid I'm gonna bring that up to a rapid simmer and then lower the heat this is going to cook between 18 to 20 minutes. Sometimes you can get it at 15 minutes. Okay, so it's at a boil rapid simmer, so we're going to lower the heat. I'm going to lower this. Just like that. And just let this continue cooking. Okay, I'm gonna shut the heat off. So I am going to carefully remove this from the burner and set it over here. Let it set with the lid on, don't remove it, for five minutes or five to 10 minutes. Here I have three chicken breasts. I'm just gonna season them. Season your chicken breast how you like. Lemon pepper, garlic powder, salt. Give it a mix. Put the chicken in the air fryer. We're gonna go temp. 400 for three to five minutes on each side. I'll do 10 minutes to start. Okay, and the chicken is done. So what I'm going to do is just take it 
and um, put it on or in a bowl. Let it cool a little bit and then I'm going to shred it. And that's uh, the shredded chicken that's going to go into the enchiladas. Okay, so here is my enchilada sauce and I created the enchilada sauce gravy. You could use the sauce that you prefer. Um, and I will show you how I made this. It's really not that hard and it's more of a gravy slash sauce. I'm going right out of my cookbook. Here I will be using the red sauce recipe. You can check the description below for the link to my cookbook and the recipe video. So what I'm going to do is preheat my pan over medium heat. I'm going to add a quarter cup of cooking oil into the pan. Now I'm going to sprinkle in a quarter cup of all-purpose flour and give that a mix. And you don't want to cook this for too long, you just want to sort of combine the flour well. Now I'm going to add two tablespoons of chili powder, and this chili powder is not spicy. And it's sort of a blend of seasonings and ingredients. Now I'm adding a teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of onion powder, and a quarter teaspoon of ground cumin. You can adjust those ratios of spices. Now that it's combined and mixed, I'm going to add one tablespoon of chicken bouillon powder, give it a mix, and little by little I'm going to add two cups of water. And this is going to give me a gravy. Once everything is combined, you'll want to simmer until it becomes thickened. And once it's gently simmering and thickened, shut off the heat. You can set it aside until you're ready to use it. Okay, now in the Blanco Cafe uh, plate or dish, when they make their the chicken enchiladas, they used red corn tortillas. I have a recipe video if you wanna make these at home. These are store-bought, it all works. So I'm gonna add a little bit of cooking oil to my preheated griddle. And I'm going to soften these and warm these through. I'm gonna do two at a time. Let's see here. And I have it on a low heat. I don't want these to get crispy. I want them to be soft and pliable. Now I'm going to add my chicken that I shredded, that I cooked earlier. And I'm gonna roll these up and put them on a plate. And I'm gonna carefully do this. Hopefully, yeah, I'll burn myself probably. <laughs> and you can add cheese. I'm really not doing a good job with this, by the way, guys. <laughs> there we go. And let's fold this one over. This is really just to sort of heat it through, and if you put cheese, it'll get the cheese on the inside. But the ones at Blanco Cafe was not, I don't think it had cheese in the center. There we go. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna serve my plate with the first two enchiladas. Here I have my carne guisada, and let's just add it here. Super soft and tender. I'm gonna go over here and get some of my rice. Now I'm gonna get my beans. Let's put it over here. I'm making a mess. There we go. Now. I'm gonna add my mild cheddar cheese. You could use sharp cheddar cheese to this. Okay, so now I'm going to take my enchilada sauce gravy and just put it right over. And I have it kind of on a low heat to stay hot. You can bake, make the enchiladas and bake them if that's easier for you, but I'm really trying to recreate that plate. And I'm pretty sure they put it under that little heating like that really hot broiler to get the cheese to melt but i think this sauce is hot enough to melt it or you know put it in the microwave i won't say anything but here we go this is how i recreated the blanco's cafe chicken enchilada carne guisada plate so good 
So I hope you give this recipe a try. I hope you like it. And thanks for watching.